I was invited up to uh, Bletchley Park. So that was my second time there. Um, I actually got to go on a tour around the site and to listen to someone telling us about what had happened there, why it was important, you know. And, and so I kind of had this, um, this moment of standing outside of one of the huts, you know, seeing it kind of a bit dilapidated with a blue tarpaulin over it. And um, one of the veterans standing there telling us about the actual things that happened in that very hut and what effects they had in the war. The, the work at Bletchley Park was said to have shortened the war by about two years. So potentially the work done there saved 22 million lives. You know, that's just such a massive, massive thing. And so I kind of standing there with like a tear in my eye thinking, and this place might, you know, might have to close because they don't have any money. That's just so wrong. So I was kind of, you know, I got angry, really, you know, and kind of thought, I've got to do something about it. So on the way back from the reception, I kind of, I, I remember bending the ear of everyone on the train with me that had been there as well, saying, what can we do? What can we do? We've got to do something about this. And um, so at that time, I was head of the department at the University of Westminster. So I was on an email list for all heads and professors of computer science in the UK. So when I got home, I had a photo I've taken of the heart and I was kind of, you know, still kind of like in my... Uh, Kind of mode. So I emailed uh, all the heads and profs saying, this is wrong, you know, I've just been here, 22 million lives. I can't remember exactly what's in the email, but I, I blogged about it as well. Um, so it's on my blog, um, saying, uh, could they please sign the petition, which was on, there was, someone else had set up a petition on the 10 Downing Street website, which was saying we must save Bletchley Park um, and asking the government for help. So I was like pointing them at it, saying, please sign the petition. Um, and I signed it, of course, and then, and so I sent the email. And then a few hours later, I thought, well, I'll just check the petition to see if anyone I know has signed it, because I've sent it around a few hundred people, right? Um, and, uh, and then I looked and saw all these famous professors of computer science from Oxford, Cambridge, wherever, that I'd never met, but obviously were on this list of heads and profs. And uh, I just thought, oh my God. So I was, I was amazed and very happy, obviously, because all these people felt the same way that I did. And to me, I was like, oh my God, I'm not worthy. These people are right up here, you know, and they've done that because I sent the email. How exciting and how cool is that? And uh, I guess that kind of gave me the confidence to just kind of carry on. And so then I thought, well, we need to do something else. So, you know, that's something, but it's not enough. So I chatted to, um, John Turner, one of my colleagues that had come up to Bletchley Park with me and said, what else can we do? And he said, why don't we write a letter to the Times um, and ask the, all these professors to sign it saying, you know, we must do something about Bletchley Park. So basically we did that. Um, I sent it round and within a couple of days, 97 heads and profs had signed the letter. Um, and then I thought, OK, so how do we make an even bigger splash with that? And so I contacted all the journalists that I knew and said, I think I've got a story. Um, and basically one of those journalists was Rory Keflin Jones. I went up to Bletchley Park and he filmed me and interviewed me up there and then it went on the BBC News and on the Today programme. So that, so that turned out to be the beginning of a campaign, but I didn't really know that it was a campaign. So I did the traditional media thing, then later on started using Twitter and, and uh, got Stephen Fry involved and various other people and gradually just tried to get the message out there. Um, and that's what social media was great for, was kind of building a community and getting the message out to people that would be interested. Then I think two years ago, some of Turing's uh, papers, Alan Turing's papers were up for auction uh, at Christie's for 300 to 500,000 pounds. And a guy called Gareth Halfercrease set up a Just Giving site asking people to give money so that Bletchley Park could buy the Turing papers because Alan Turing worked at Bletchley Park so it seemed to us like that would be the best place for them to be in the museum at Bletchley Park. He managed to get £20,000 really quickly which was amazing um, but I kind of like I had this in the back of my mind because I wanted to help make that happen and I was at a talk at Nesta um, and Megan Smith who's a Google um, VP was speaking there I thought, oh, Google, they, they might have some money. They might be interested in Bletchley Park. So basically, I just went and chatted to Megan at the end of her talk um, and said, would you be interested in helping um, Bletchley Park? And she said, send me an email with the details. So I did. In a nutshell, various um, organisations came together with Bletchley Park to, to buy the papers for Bletchley Park. And so that was the beginning of the the relationship between Google and Bletchley Park. So I feel like I started something off um, 
but so many people have been involved. It's just incredible. And I mean, it's really amazed me and sort of made me very happy that, that so many people feel the same way that I do um, and, and wanted Bletchley Park to be successful and thought it was an important place and thought what happened there was really important that we should save it. So I think really it's thousands of people all coming together, all talking to other people and now Bletchley Park are just in a whole different situation now, a very good situation to be in, um, where they've received, I think it's 4.6 million funding from Heritage Lottery. Next year is going to be a year of big kind of renovation on site. Um, but, you know, they're still, they still need lots more money, um, but they're definitely not in the situation that they were four years ago.